What's up, Cowboys Nation? Welcome back to another pregame prediction video. It is week 11 in the NFL, and the Dallas Cowboys are on the road again, taking on the 1-8 Carolina Panthers. Let's talk about it. Prescott. Touchdown. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Cowboys content. At this point of the season, I'm pushing out like five videos throughout the entire week. So that's five out of seven days that I'm pushing content out. Madden predictions, pregame predictions, postgame reactions, film breakdown, NFL picks. Um, it, it's a great time of the year and I'm pushing all kinds of content out. So be sure to subscribe for more of that. And if you have... Man, I appreciate you. And before we jump in halfway through the season here, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Um, when I started this channel, and you could see my very, very first video, uh, I never thought that I would have more than 100 subscribers or, you know, just more than just a handful. So to to be at 2,000, is it's always, I have to pinch myself. And, and more than that, I mean, we have over 6,000 followers on Instagram. We have over 35,000 followers on TikTok, over 1,000 followers on X. Just, just it's, it's incredible what you guys are doing, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So um, I just want to say that, start this video out by that. So be sure to like the video and subscribe for more Cowboys content. Um, you guys have been awesome, and thanks, to, thanks for being a part of this journey. I really do appreciate it. But let's jump on in. Week 11, Cowboys are coming off of a win. Panthers, uh, their season has not gone the way they expected, or perhaps maybe it has. <laughs> uh, you know, they got a little bit of draft capital, so uh, they can definitely build around Bryce Young. And that's one of the first things I'll say about this Carolina Panthers team. Um, they have some really good talent. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily bad talent. There are definitely weaknesses with this Carolina team. And, and you know, you are what your record is, so there's a reason why they're 1-8. and eight, But I feel like they have a good structure. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that you have to do right, and it's very hard to win consistently in the NFL. But, but you know, I'll just tip my hat to the Carolina Panthers with that. You know, I, I'm high on Bryce Young. I like Bryce Young. A lot of people discredit him for his size and whatever. It's just, it's a bunch of nonsense. But uh, I like Bryce Young. I think he's a, he, he's a solid quarterback. And with, you know, with any situation, if you put the right players and, and put your players in the best position, you can find yourself some success in the league. So that's, that's I just want to start off by saying that with the Carolina Panthers. And I'll also say this, and I'll jump right into it. Do not underestimate this game. We talked about this three-game stretch, right? After the Eagles game, we had the New York Giants, we had the Carolina Panthers, and we have the Washington Commanders on Thanksgiving. Look, I believe that it's increasing in intensity and difficulty. Giants were always going to be the easiest game. Panthers, I'll say it right now, I think they'll be a challenge uh, I, I do still see that the Cowboys should ultimately come out of Carolina with the road win, but don't underestimate them. And we're going to break that down in this video and tell you why I feel that way. But there's a little bit of hesitation. Now, would it be completely different if we were at home at AT&T Stadium? Absolutely. <laughs> but because this is on the road... Well, we'll talk about it, but, but back to my main point, and then we got the Washington Commanders, which I do believe will be a, a really good matchup, and that's going to be exciting to see on Thanksgiving. They always give us the, the, the difficult games on Thanksgiving. Like, give us give us something else, man. Should have given us the Giants on Thanksgiving, because I don't want to stress on Thanksgiving, but let's jump on in. Road games, you guys know me. If you've been around, you know how uh, adamant I am about this team winning on the road. If you can win on the road, if you can replicate the success that you've been having at home, which is a whole lot of success. I mean, they've been dominating at home, and I'm talking about the Cowboys. If they can take that and go on the road, this becomes a very dangerous team. It becomes a championship contending team. Uh, but right now, they're 2-3 and three on the road. You look back to last year. They were four and four on the road, including the playoffs. They were five and five. This team, I hate to say it, but under the Mike McCarthy Eric, you don't know what this, you don't know which team to expect when they go on the road, and and it's it's very unfortunate to see. But you see a lot of mental collapses, a lot of mental miscues, a lot of penalties, false starts, holdings, just a lot of things that hold this team back just happen on the road, 
and 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 usually i would say you know it's a mishap or it's a coincidence but we're a couple of seasons into this now we're three four seasons into the mccarthy era three seasons into this successful era going back two years and then last year and then this year um there's something going on with these road trips <laughs> i have no idea what it is i can't speculate maybe it's their airliners maybe it's the maybe it's how they prepare going on the road but you gotta you gotta be a good road team basically that that's that's all it is you gotta be a good road team you've got to find some uh, some sort of success here and this is potentially a game where you can bounce back and gain some confidence on the road so you can take this later down in, in those stretches where you have those big games um where you're playing uh you know Miami where you're playing Buffalo uh so this is important to gain that confidence in the same way that Dak Prescott gained confidence against the Chargers and the Rams and he had really good games that which led to having a really great game in Philadelphia against the Eagles same thing here if you can get one or two big wins good wins on the road this team's always going to look back at those wins and be like look at what we did we can do it and if we did it we can do it again oh I'll preach right now come on church anyways anyways let's jump on in Cowboys defense versus Panthers offense and be sure to hit that like button and subscribe let's jump on on and let's throw up the graphic here let's take a look very similar if not worse than what we saw against the new york giants and how about that offense man just a couple of games and this offense remember if you've been tuning into the pregame prediction videos remember when that offense was like 16th and like 18th and and i kept telling you guys i don't believe that's a true reflection of what this team could be well after a few games they bump up to the top 10 and they're seventh in the nfl and that defense is still rocking second in the nfl and now now if you look on the other side obviously the panthers aren't doing a lot of things right they have one of the worst not one of the worst. They're the, the worst offense in the NFL in terms of points per game, uh, yards per game, um, and, and then that defense. See that right there? That's what I'm talking about. There's a sneaky part about the Carolina Panthers that makes you just perk up just a little bit, just a little bit. Not enough for me to be concerned or worried about Sunday, but to but just – just be on the lookout. I saw some people commenting uh, as we're hyping up this game and going to Sunday. A lot of people said, uh, this reminds me of the Jacksonville Jaguars game last year. And if you guys were here uh, with my pregame predictions last year, I kind of warned you about the Jaguars game. I still picked us to win and we should have won it. Um, except, you know, Noah Brown just has brick for hands. Not really. He's doing really well in Houston. And I did pick him up on my fantasy team, regardless of the point. But I told y'all, I was like, watch out for that Jaguars team. Watch out for what they're doing down there. Uh, and, and they and they passed all over us against our depleted secondary. Regardless of the point, I'm here to tell you, I don't have strong as I don't have as strong feelings as I did against the Jaguars last year. But there is there's some talent um, on the Panthers. Their defense, their secondary, especially. And we'll get into that when we talk about the Cowboys offense versus the Panthers defense. But like I said, the talent is there for this team. Bryce Young has the ability to use his legs. Uh, and he's really good against the blitz. Now, there's a difference between the blitz and the pressure. He's not so good against pressure, but he's really effective against the blitz meaning if the cowboys draw up a blitz play if they're sending more than their three or their four on the line bryce young can usually pick it out and read it and, and throw a uh, deliver a good ball but it's pressure getting just and we can do that with our front four with our front three the cowboys are really good at just generating pressure they hardly call up a blitz play but uh bryce young uh number one overall pick for a reason Let's just get that out of the way. He's not a scrub. He's a solid quarterback with a promising career. He can make you pay if you give him the chance to pay. Now, that's the important thing is you don't want to give him that opportunity. But when we're talking about this team, I mean, they have a nice duo running attack in Carolina. I mean, they got Miles Sanders, which the Cowboys are used to that name. They're used to Miles Sanders, him being a former Philadelphia Eagle. Now, if, if their stats don't really indicate that, but, you know, stats are there to help us analyze games at certain points and maybe predict or lean and give ourselves a hunch on what might happen on game day. But I'm going to tell you right now, just watch out. This, this Carolina Panthers team can really stretch the run to the outsides. Inside, they don't necessarily have the offensive line to do that, and that is, in fact, 
fact, one of their biggest weaknesses, if not their biggest weakness, is their offensive line. It is not good, and that's the reason why, one of the big reasons why they're 1-8. Um, but, but that being said, they can run to the outside. That's important because the Cowboys have shown a little bit of difficulty with containing the outside run. So again, game you gotta you gotta rely on your basics. You gotta rely on coaching with this game, especially going on the road. Trust your instincts. Trust uh, trust the process of what you've done through training camp and the rest of the year. That you gotta contain the edge. You gotta be a good tackler. You gotta help tackle. Things like that really go far on the road, and that's something that we have to do in order to contain Miles Sanders and their wide receiver room. I mean, they got Adam Thielen, DJ Chark Jr. They got some guys to throw to, and they got a nice tight tight end out there that we've seen a few times, Hayden Hurst, and he can create some matchup issues. And so, just running through that offense. They have the potential. I'm just saying. I don't think it's clicked. I think at some point it can click. Um, could it be against the Cowboys? Hopefully not. Hopefully we don't find ourselves in a nail biter here. But it's the NFL. And you look at all these players. They're all talented on paper. But it's all about just getting them to work together. Let's talk about Bryce Young a little bit. Rookie year, right? Kind of, you know, uh, not the best year, but not the worst year. Eight touchdowns, seven interceptions, over 1,500 yards. Um, 31st in the NFL when it comes to his QBR. That is not good. Um, he's definitely lacking confidence. And, and if you take a look at his 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 uh, his his games throughout the season, only one particularly stands out, but look at the interception count on that October 8th game against the Detroit Lions. For the Detroit Lions, they're, they're not a bad team. We all know that, but three touchdowns, two interceptions, has yet to throw over 300 yards in a game. Right here, I see a combination of things. I think the head coach now, Frank Wright, who has taken over the offensive coordinator calling play calling duties, um, and, and there's a reason for that, but I think it's, it's a mixture of those things. It's, it's the play calling not being there. Uh, it, it's Bryce Young not feeling confident enough. You know, throwing a rookie quarterback into a situation is always iffy, in my opinion, especially if you're the number one overall draft pick. I mean, you're not going into a good situation if you're drafted number one overall. I mean, you really aren't when you're drafted number one first overall because, you know, you're, you're going to a team who is that bad and, and you're sticking it out for a few years and the, the, until they can finally get those pieces. So you could see just by the season stats, He's not. He's lacking confidence. But that's not to say he's not talented and, and has the ability to. I think he can. I think he'll have a couple of throws against the Cowboys on Sunday. But like I said, this offensive line is bad, man. It's not giving anyone. It's not paying anyone favors or anything like that. 32 sacks taken in the NFL. That's 28th in the NFL. And, and I talk about pressure. When we talk about pressure with Bryce Young, he has a 43.9 QBR against the pressure. So that's what I mean. And the Cowboys are really good at pressure. So if the Cowboys can just be who they are and dominate that offensive line, this game could just be over uh, by halftime. It really could be. But again, against the Blitz, he's actually pretty good. So, you know, th there's that play calling balance that DQ has to have when it comes to Sunday. And um, I'll say this too. The Dallas Cowboys defense has been quiet the past few weeks uh, in terms of scoring, in terms of takeaway. We did have one takeaway, but it was Tommy DeVito. So, and Deron, you know, Deron Bland's going to pick off Tommy, De Tommy DeVito. And so in terms of that, it's been a little bit quiet because if you look at that, uh, the, the New York Giants game, no turnovers against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, and then, you know, Mar and then you're playing the Los Angeles Rams and, you know, some fans are going to be like, oh, well, Kyle, we stopped Cooper Cup and we stopped Puka Nakua. Stop. We, we only played Matthew Stafford for one half and we got to see Mark Ripon for the other half. So, you know, not, not a lot of this defense has been quiet. I'll just say it. I'll just say it. I, I think they've been quiet and, and. I think some of the issues that you would normally think that a team would have, I think it's flying under the radar just because of the teams that we're playing. That's just my hunch. That's just my gut. I don't want to jump too much into it because if I do, I may go somewhere else with it. But that's just how I feel. And so now they're playing a pretty talented group, in my opinion, with with the talent, with the wide receivers and the, and the running back and the quarterback. You might see a little bit of struggle to begin with on Sunday. That's just my hunch. I wanted to put it out there. That's just, but I'm hoping for a big day from Michael Parsons. He was quiet last week. Just everyone that's been talking about Michael Parsons is he slowing down? Is this, you know, that stop? That's, 
you know, that's ridiculous. With Michael Parsons, he doesn't have to go out there and have two to three sacks every single game. I mean, his 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 effectiveness really comes off the ball as well. And and you know, the fans that are saying Michael Parsons needs to be better and all that kind of stuff, those are the same fans that don't understand Demarcus Lawrence and his effectiveness with this team. And this team is not as good if Demarcus Lawrence is not playing defensive end, but because he is, this defense is one of the best in the NFL. So contain the outside run, pressure Bryce Young, and this game can be wrapped up. If not, we're going to have another fiasco on the road. But just be consistent. Get that confidence defensively and wrap up this game. But here are my defensive predictions come Sunday for the Cowboys and the Panthers. I got two sacks. I think Bryce Young is mobile. He can avoid some sacks. I think we will pressure him a lot so we could see him as a young quarterback getting rid of the ball, being smart with it. But I think we get to him twice. And then... It's going to come towards the end of the game. It's going to come towards later in the game, but the Cowboys pressure will ultimately get to him and he will throw two interceptions. Bryce Young will throw two interceptions and this defense will have two takeaways by the end of this game in week 11. But be sure to like and subscribe because now we're going to jump into the offense versus this Panthers defense. Let's go ahead and throw that graphic back up again. Like I said, Cowboys seventh in the NFL in their offense. That that productivity is finally living up to the potential there. So, and then you talk about passing, had a huge day, huge day, over 400 yards, had two receivers, 150 plus yards. It was insane. Jake Ferguson's getting involved. Jalen Tolbert's getting involved. It's just really great to see. The one thing that you notice I did not mention is our freaking running offense. And that, my friends, is something that I will adamantly speak about because good teams find multiple ways to win. We've seen us win with defense. We've seen us winning passing the ball. I got to see that running offense work. I got to see it. And now, now we got a spark. We got a spark. We got a spark against the Giants. Rico Dowdle hopefully is that hole, uh, is that is that player to fill that hole for us. And, and uh, you know, hopefully now Mike McCarthy and Brian Schottenheimer have no other choice but to involve Rico Dowdle more because he was the leading rusher on Sunday. And hopefully that complements Tony Pollard. So now he can just smash through those seams and get those big yardages that we've seen him do. And he did that against the Giants on, on Sunday. But this is important. Same reason why I told you why winning on the road and getting a couple of games on the road is important to help build the confidence. And in the same way, Dak Prescott had confidence built against the Chargers and the Rams. Same thing here. You have to emphasize the running game at some point. It would be a huge disappointment for me personally if we go out there and Dak Prescott has to throw his way into this game. We know Dak's great. We know he can throw the ball. We know we can give our receivers that uh, amount of yards and we can get them open. But we have to be able able to control time of possession we have to be able to win at the line and and passing sometimes it, it it'll it does it it allows bad offensive line play to go under the radar and then obviously when you play a team that is proficient enough in their defensive line then that's when you finally notice like oh my gosh we have a bad offensive line so let's emphasize this the panthers are a team that you can run over so let's emphasize that. But let, like I said, don't let this team fool you. This Panthers defense is sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Take a look at this graphic right here. This is passing defense. And look where the Panthers are located. They're sneaky good with their pass defense. So another reason for this offense to ignite and, and build the momentum with the running offense that they found against the Giants. Be careful. And they got a little bit better because J.C. Horn, the young cornerback stud, came back from IR. So they got even better over the past couple of weeks. Just, just watch out for that. There are a couple of ball hawks and they can get after the ball. And, uh, you know, I love Dak and I love the way he's been playing. It's been an MVP level. But the Giants did not have a secondary like the Panthers. I would even argue the Eagles, yes, the Eagles did not have a secondary like the Panthers. They might be on the same level. The Rams definitely didn't. The Chargers definitely didn't. So the Panthers, low-key, are one of the best secondaries that the Cowboys will see this year. Kind of, honestly, I throw them in the conversation with the Jets. Now, we've seen Dak explode the Jets, exploit them, um... So we could see the same thing here, and we could see that Texas Coast attack if that running game is not working for the offense, the quick short passes and the first reads that we were talking about early in the season instead of attacking vertically to get that going in case the running defense doesn't get going. But a real fun matchup to watch is the third down. 
Uh, the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott are incredible in third down situations, and their offense has proven that this entire year. But the Panthers' defense, again, sneaky good, sneaky, sneaky good. They're actually a pretty solid team when it comes to third down defense. So basically, keep an eye on that. If the Cowboys are not extending drives and they're not getting off the field on third down, you're giving the Panthers a chance. And like I said, they got talent, so they could potentially make it work. So this is a team game. Obviously, you got to see both sides of the field uh, come up offense and defense. But let's take a quick look at this schedule here, and let's talk about this team on the road. They have played on the road five times. They scored 40 points, 16 points, 10 points, 20 points, and 23 points. You do the math on that. Don't worry. I did it for you. That's 21.8, 21.8 points per game. Three touchdowns, basically, we're talking about. Three touchdowns that the Cowboys have been scoring on the road on average. If you ask me, that's not enough to tilt the scale scale in today's NFL. Four touchdowns is leaning your way. Five touchdowns, you most likely are going to win this game. Three touchdowns in today's NFL is not enough to widen that mar margin to give you a win on the road. Now, if you look at what they're doing at home, they played four times at home. They're averaging 40 points per, per game. So something's happening here on the road where your offensive production is literally being cut in half. Uh, that needs to be fixed. And, and the Cowboys simply have to find a way to replicate that success that they are having at home. They got to do it. They got it. And that's, you know, sometimes when you're on the road, you're obviously in a hostile environment. You go back to what, you, uh, what you're good at. What are the Cowboys good at? They got to ask themselves. We know they could throw the ball. We know we can. But what happens when you can't throw the ball and the pressure is beating our offensive line? That's why running the football is so important. That's you got to win multiple ways. Right now, it's fun. Right now, we can air it out against these bad teams. But against the competitive teams, and, and if we're, I hope not, but if we're on the road in the playoffs, passing the football in colder weathers is not a winning formula. So, you got to score, you got to get better, you got to find points, and you got to finish in the red zone. These are all things that we know, but the Cowboys need to find that in this game so they can build on it and take it to Buffalo, take it to Miami, take it to Washington. And if you can do that on top of the wins that we're getting at home, you could potentially grab that NFC East and host a playoff game instead of having to worry about the road, which we saw last season. So here's my offensive predictions for week 11 against the Cowboys and the Panthers. I got a Rico Dowdle touchdown. I think the Cowboys found a lot of success. They found lightning in a bottle last week, and they're going to feed him, and Rico Dowdle gets in the end zone. I'm also believing for Gallup, Michael Gallup, to have another touchdown. He had one last week against the Giants, but I think this one's going to be looking nice. I think they're going to be maybe in a red zone situation, and Dak's going to throw it in the corner of the end zone, and it's going to be vintage Michael Gallup. He's going to go ahead, go up and grab it, land those two feet down, and get the touchdown. Last but not least, Dak Prescott, I believe, has two touchdowns. All when all is said and done on Sunday. And I told you about this sneaky good defense. They got some talent. They're one of the better secondaries in the NFL. I know that's hard to believe, but I'm telling you right now. So I do believe there is an error in the mix. Dak could throw an interception. That's all I'll say about it. But other than that, be sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in and always watching my videos. I really appreciate it. But here's my game prediction for the Cowboys and the Panthers. Cowboys are 2-3 and three on the road. They got to get better. That's the storyline. And if you win here, you get back to a 500 record on the road. And to there's a couple of things that you want to do. You want to win on the road, but also find a way of running the football. I think they gain, they continue this success that they're having, and they put together a winning streak here. So I do believe the Dallas Cowboys find a way to beat the Carolina Panthers. I believe it's going to be tough. I believe it's going to be a little bit closer than a lot of people expect. I'm not thinking like it's going to take a game-winning touchdown or anything like that. But there will be some struggles, and as fans, we may be a little bit frustrated watching the first half of this game. But the Cowboys come out of this win. My final score prediction is I believe the Cowboys win 27 to 17 
against the Carolina Panthers. With that win, they move to 7-3. and three. They go on a two-game winning streak, and then they have to turn around for a short week for Thanksgiving against the Washington Commanders. But again, be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to drop down your defense and your offense score uh, predictions as well as your game prediction and your score prediction for Sunday's matchup against the Panthers. But other than that, I will see you guys after the game for our post-game reaction. Be sure to check out the film breakdown from last week. Be sure to check out our Madden prediction for the Cowboys and Panthers. That was an insane game. I can't believe it was that. It was. It goes down as one of the, the, the best Madden prediction games that we've had for any kind of matchup. And we've been doing that for two seasons. But other than that, I will see you guys after the game Sunday. Go Cowboys. Prescott. Touchdown.